good morning students myself dr ragusuda assistant professor in microbiology government city college is here to give a brief introduction to microbiology the introduction to microbiology starts from origin of life as the first life on earth is an ancestor of bacteria Here is the picture of a timeline of early earth being bombarded with the comets and meteorites. The earth has formed around 4.55 billion years ago and this hot ball of fire has cooled to form an innermost crust around 4.2 to 4.1 billion years ago gradually developed to form a surface a hard surface and this hard surface was constantly bombarded with comets meteorites and asteroids the earliest direct evidence of life on earth uh, are microfossils and uh, uh, later in uh, 3.85 billion years ago the first traces of biochemicals were formed and according to a theory called uh, panspermia the life on earth have come from these biological matters carried by space dust or meteorites so the well uh, the first evidence of oldest fossil uh, is believed uh, to belong uh, uh, to around 3.7 billion years ago the oldest known fossils uh, are of uh, cyanobacteria from arkin rocks of western australia dated 3.5 billion years old while the oldest rocks are only little older than the cyanobacteria that is 3.8 billion years ago so the time period required to form the first life form on earth is assumed to be very small very short and uh, these uh, cyanobacteria were uh, identified uh, to identified as langionella kenstonella crococalins and paleolingbe this is an archean rock with langionella and kenstonella here in the picture we can see gray colored uh, circular uh, and wavy patches uh, these patches are the cyanobacteria and the other uh, bacteria are crococcalis which form uh, in clusters whereas paleolingbe is a filamentous cyanobacteria the last universal ancestor common ancestor the last universal common ancestor uh, which uh, is believed to be the common ancestor for all living forms on earth uh, might have lived in deep sea hydrothermal vents around 3.5 to 3.8 billion years ago while on land the first uh, fossil is a fungi named uh, aurasphyra gayardi well uh, though the microorganisms uh, uh, have formed the first life on earth but the subject of uh, uh, microbiology or the study of microorganisms called microbiology has begun with anton van leeuwenhoek's discovery of microorganisms since 1675 using a microscope of his own design what is microbiology simply it is the study of all living organisms that are too small to be visible by naked eye example of microorganisms are bacteria fungi protozoa algae and viruses in general these microorganisms are known as germs germ refers to rapidly growing cell the nature of microorganisms is they grow very fast here there are some of the pictures of this uh, microorganisms like bacteria growing on foot and a study of bacteria is known as bacteriology 
Picture B shows fungi with the sporangia and spores and study of fungi is known as mycology. The picture C shows amoebae with the uh, pseudopodia and food particles. Study of uh, protozoans is known as protozoology. Picture D shows algae and study of algae is known as algology. Picture E shows HIV, human immunodeficiency virus infecting a cell and study of viruses is known as virology. So each and every microorganism has emerged into a separate branch of study of its own. Well, the definition of microbes is any organism too small to be viewed by unaided eye that comprises of either a single cellular or unicellular cell structures, cell, uh, cell clusters or multicellular relatively complex organisms. So in the microorganisms we can see unicellular forms and, and multicellular forms also. However, some unicellular protistas and uh, bacteria like Thiomargarita and Amoebiensis are macroscopic and visible to naked eye. The size of microorganisms is, uh, is of uh, very importance uh, because uh, we have to one has to determine what is the size of an organism and how small it is. The smallest known bacterium is mycoplasma, uh, which is of 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 uh, micrometers, whereas viruses, uh, anything smaller than this mycoplasma is a virus. And the largest uh, known bacterium is Thiomargarita and of 750 micrometers. So here uh, the range of, uh, here we are talking about the range of smallest bacterium and the largest bacterium. And uh, while we talk about the size of microorganisms, viruses are much smaller than this mycoplasma uh, that is 0.2 micrometers. They are uh, filterable through all the filters. Here in the picture we can see the smallest bacterium mycoplasma genitalium with uh, a flask shaped structure. These microorganisms live in all parts of the biosphere where there is water, soil, hot springs on the ocean floor, high in the atmosphere and deep inside rocks within the earth's crust. These microorganisms uh, play an important role in decomposition of uh, all organic waste. The dead matter produced by plants, animals, human beings, etc. Everything is being decomposed by these microorganisms. These microorganisms are the largest producers in the ecosystem through photosynthesis. Apart from this, they also produce some industrially important chemicals like ethyl alcohol, methanol, acetone, citric acid, etc. They even produce uh, fermented foods such as uh, vinegar, cheese, bread, etc. These microorganisms play an important role in causing pathogenesis to all living organisms, uh, right from insects to human beings. All animals are uh, diseased because of these microorganisms. Most importantly, these organisms are vital to humans and the environment as they participate in Earth's elemental cycles such as carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, sulfur cycle, phosphorus cycle, etc. These cycles have are been run by the uh, conversions made from one stage to other with the help of the microorganisms. The knowledge of microbes allows humans to prevent food spoilage and prevent disease occurrence. They even uh, help in uh, uh, developing, uh, uh, preventing uh, contamination in medicines and uh, microbiologic laboratories by the development of uh, aseptic techniques.
moving on to history of microbiology as i've told you even uh, uh, before the discovery of microscope uh, there is no study of microorganisms uh, basically and this particular period we can call as pre microbiology era and in this era uh, many scholars uh, have uh, made speculations about the existence of microorganisms the existence of unseen microbiological life was postulated by jainism which is based on mahavir's techniques as early as 16th century bce in first century book on agriculture roman scholar marcus <coughs> in his first century book on agriculture roman scholar marcus terentius varro was the first known to suggest the possibility of disease spreading by yet unseen organisms in his book he warns against locating a homestead near swamps because they are bred certain minute creatures that cannot be seen by the eyes which float in the air and even the body through the mouth and nose and they cause serious disease so he warns people living near swamps because these swamps are have some unseen organisms which was serious diseases in the canon of medicine 1020 abu ali ibasina hypothesized that tuberculosis and other diseases might be contagious in 1546 girolamo fracastaro proposed that epidemic diseases were caused by transferable seed like entities that could transmit infection by direct or indirect contact or even without contact over long distances all these early claims about the existence of microorganisms were speculative and were not based on any data or science microorganisms neither proven observed nor correctly or accurately described until 17th century the reason for this was that all these early studies lacked the microscope now let us see the microscope and the discovery of microorganisms three dutch spectacle makers namely hans jansen jacaris jansen hans lippershey are credited for the discovery of the first compound microscope in the year 1590 they developed a compound microscope with a eyepiece and an objective lens In 1665 Robert Hooke in his book Micrographia included microscopic views of fleas lice and needles observed under the microscope The book contains the de- description on the construction of single lens microscope which was used by Anton van Leeuwenhoek to build a simple microscope to observe microorganisms for the first time Here Robert hook a compound microscope was able to produce a magnification of 20 to 30 times the size uh, of the natural size of the organism whereas anton van leeuwenhoek developed a simple microscope with a better magnification of 200 times the size of a natural size and thus he made one of the most important contributions to biology Robert Hooke was the first to use microscope to observe living things. Hooke's 1665 book Micrographia contained uh, descriptions of plant cells. Before Van Leeuwenhoek's discovery of microorganisms in 1675 it has been mysterious why grapes could be turned into wine, milk into cheese or why food would spoil. He is Anton Van Leeuwenhoek. belonging to 17th century known as father of microbiology he was a dutch businessman and scientist in the golden age of dutch science and technology a largely self-taught man in science 
and was the first to observe bacteria and protozoa. In 1674, he observed protozoa for the first time and several years later bacteria. He named these, anim uh, these uh, uh, organisms as animalicules. Animalicules means animal-like molecules. He isolated them from different sources such as rainwater, pond, well water, human mouth, that is uh, tooth uh, scrapings and intestine. In 1677, he described for the first time spermatozoa from insects, dogs and man. He studied the structure of optic lens, striations in muscles, mouth parts of insects, fine structure of plants and parthenogenesis in aphids. In 1680, he noticed that yeast consists of minute globular particles. He even extended Marcello Malfigi's demonstration of blood capillaries by giving the first accurate description of on red blood cells. He even observed white blood cells. He is credited for his observations and studies on spirogera, fleas, structure and metamorphosis, ant eggs, ciliates, flagellates and eels. In his lifetime, he has ground more than 500 lenses, most of which are very small size, about a pinhead and he mounted these uh, lenses between two thin brass plates riveted together. In one of his letters uh, in September uh, 1683 to Ro Royal Society England, he stated that in all falling rain carried from gutters into water butts, animalicules are to be found and that in all kinds of water standing in the open air, animalicules can turn up. For these animalicules can be carried over by the wind along with the bits of the dust floating in the air. So he simply states that these animalicules are present everywhere in the environment and on living creatures. This is the microscope developed by Anton van Leeuwenhoek and these microscopes are very small about the size of our palm size. Actually these are uh, microscopes uh, which can be seen with the hand rather than on a putting on a table. Today we have microscopes which we uh, put them on a, a table top while these microscopes uh, are handled with the hand. The microscope has uh, different parts like lens, uh, sample holder, then uh, focus knob and sample translator. And these are the diagrams drawn by Anton van Leeuwenhoek in his uh, papers published white blood cells, red blood cells, E cells, sperm cells and bacterial cells. He also illustrated Gaiardia lambia protozoan in his own stools. Anton van Leeuwenhoek uh, seems to have been inspired uh, to take up microscopy by the illustrations made by Robert Hooke in his book uh, Micrographia and uh, he was able to produce, enhance the magnification of the power of the microscope about 300 times. He must have employed some form of oblique illumination to enhance the effectiveness of the lens but the exact method is unknown. Leeuwenhoek did not make the connection between the processes like uh, the process, wine processes or uh, production of cheese, uh, spoilage of microorganism uh, food but using a microscope he did establish that there were forms of life that were not visible to the naked eye. 
Van Leeuwenhoek's discovery along with subsequent observations by Spallanzani and Pasteur ended the long-held belief that life spontaneously appeared from non-living substances during the process of spoilage. During the uh, 17th century and before, many believed about uh, spontaneous generation that is life can arise from non-living matter. Leeuwenhoek has uh, argued that uh, the shells, she, uh, sea shells and the organisms in the sea are not produced from the sand but from, the, uh, from a pre-existing form of life. Leeuwenhoek's research on lower animals refuted the doctrine of spontaneous generation. He contributed his work almost to the end of his long life of 90 years. And in year, June 12, 1716, he says that my work which I have done for a long time was not pursued in order to gain prize I now enjoy but chiefly from a craving after knowledge which I notice resides in me more than in most other men. And therewithal, whenever I found out anything remarkable, I have thought it my duty to put down my discovery on paper so that all ingenious people might be informed thereof. So he was a brilliant man with uh, an uh, passion and craving for knowledge. Thank you.